Hi, this is April. Welcome back to my channel. Recently, I have discovered the advantages of using a full frame sensor. I really love the shallow depth of field and the better dynamic range. I have to admit, I was influenced by some of the other creators on YouTube. But I picked up a Sony a7 IV. And this thing is pretty heavy. It's like 660 grams. And the one thing that I really missed about the smaller APS-C size bodies is that if you want to hold the camera towards yourself and vlog, this setup gets really heavy really quick. And it's not so much the weight of the body itself, it's the weight of the lenses. I just wanted to insert this quick apology. In editing, I realized I didn't stop down the lens, so when I'm showing the camera bodies, it's blurring out my face. It's a noob mistake, which is pretty typical for me. Bear with me as I learn more about apertures. <laughs> and this is a Sigma 16 to 28 millimeter lens, f2.8. This is about 450 grams which is on the lighter end of what you can expect for a full frame lens. But still, it made my vlogging arm shake pretty badly. So recently I discovered there was a full frame body that was in a really light package, 483 grams. This is a Sony ZV-E1. And I watched a bunch of reviews and they were kind of mixed. A lot of them said this overheats pretty badly. But a lot of reviewers praise this camera for its great stability, which is something that's really important to me if I'm going to do a vlog out and about. The only problem that I'm having with this camera is the Sigma 16 to 28 millimeter lens. It's kind of heavy on this body, and a lot of times when I'm holding it up, it'll droop forward. And that's been sort of a problem. So I've been on a search to find a lens that's lighter than the Sigma 16 to 28 that comes in at 450 grams. But first, I want you to see the footage that comes out of this lens. Even though it's heavy, the footage is really nice, I think. search to find a lighter lens that would still be able to work with this full frame sensor. So a lot of reviewers have tried using the Sony 11mm 1.8 APS-C lens, which is only 181 grams, but I have a couple of issues using an APS-C lens when I'm paying for a full frame sensor. It's not using the full IQ of the sensor, and as you'll see in this footage, there's some black vignetting around the sides, even when you're punched in with dynamic stabilization that crops in 30%. So I wanted to find something better than an APS-C lens if possible, because if I'm gonna be using an APS-C lens, I'd rather use an APS-C body, frankly. It doesn't make a lot of sense to spend the money on a full frame. lens I tried is a Sigma 17mm f4. 
This thing weighs only 252 grams and this by far has been my favorite. As you can see in my test footage, it does a really good job and looks pretty natural when it's punched in in dynamic stabilization. I'm pretty much preferring active stabilization in most cases, frankly, because I never remember to crank up the shutter speed. I usually use 1 over 50 because I film in 24 frames per second, but with the dynamic stabilization, you're supposed to crank up your shutter speed even more so it has a more natural motion blur, but I never remember. problem with this lens is at f4 you're not letting in as much light so it might not be the best for low light situations but honestly this 12 megapixel sensor lets in so much light I've been able to film in a pretty dark room without having any noticeable deficit. So finally I decided to try the nice compact Sony 24 millimeter lens f2.8 it was developed to go on the more compact bodies like the Sony a7C, but it fits really nicely on the Sony ZV-E1, as you can see. The only problem that you'll notice with this one from my test footage is that it definitely crops in quite a bit with active stabilization, which is only a 10% crop, but with that 30% crop, you're kind of reaching the limits of what looks nice for a vlog but I really appreciate its compact size. And I really do think this would make a really nice uh, street photography lens. the prices of the lenses I was able to get the Sony 11 millimeter lens for around $350 used on eBay as far as the Sony 24 millimeter lens that ran around 450 used on eBay the Sigma 17 ran around $599 new and lastly, the Sigma 16 to 28 millimeter lens was about $800 refurbished on Amazon. The prices were all relatively reasonable as compared to something like a Sony G Master lens, which is completely out of my budget. But I wanted to do this comparison so I could see which lens I really want to keep for vlogging and which lenses I'd like to sell. So I hope you find this little comparison useful. I really do like the Sony ZV-E1. It just works so well in low light. And filming mostly around the house and in museums, I definitely need that advantage in low light. I am getting in the Sony A6700 pretty soon, and I want to test that out because my main issue with my old camera, the Sony ZV-E10, is that the footage was so shaky that you had to use active stabilization and crop in at 40% or you had to use that program Catalyst Browse which really took forever for me. I didn't enjoy adding that extra step to the editing process. If you like this video, give it a like. 
consider subscribing for more camera reviews from a newbie like me. God bless.